Hello, hello everyone. Come on in, come on in. This is your girl Carolise, and today we're talking about Agile again. We're just having this conversation about Agile. I hope you watch my other videos. You know, I'm your business analyst coach, and right now we're coaching on Agile, okay? So this is great for newbies. And if you've also been working in Agile for a while, this might be helpful to you as well. So the topic today is about can you make a change to the acceptance criteria when you're already in the sprint? Can you do that? How should you handle changes to your acceptance criteria during a sprint? And this is a very important question that a lot of people have been asking. So they want to know if you can make a change during the sprint. And the answer to that is yes. Yes, you can. You can make a change during the sprint. But you shouldn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You shouldn't. You should not be in the habit of making changes when you're already inside of the sprint, when you've already started the sprint. It's not a good practice. You shouldn't be doing it. And the reason why it's not a good practice is because, you know, before the sprint, you had a lot of time to prepare for the sprint. You should have had a lot of time to prepare for the sprint. And you should be in the cadence of prepping for the next sprint as soon as the first sprint starts. Like, as soon as you're done with sprint grooming, you're prepping for the next sprint and the next sprint. and the next. So you can do it at you know, blocks at a time, but you really should be preparing for it. So you should be having the conversations, you should be having the meetings, you should be clarifying all the questions ahead of time. And then when you get to the grooming, you write all the acceptance criteria, the development team should have time to absorb what you're coming up with for the next sprint, to re review it from a technical perspective and to ask you questions. That if you need to then go ask other people, you can go take that question to them and clarify all that stuff. So you have some time there. So that should reduce the need to be changing when you're in the sprint already. But we all live in the real world, right? And things happen, okay? And nobody's perfect. I get it. And so there are times when you have to make a change. But again, it should not be a habit. It should not be the, the ideal. It should be something that is like, edge case like really strange really just out of urgency but it shouldn't be a norm because it affects your uh your estimation points if you've already done the sprint planning and they've est estimated how much story points they'll need and they know they've you know their velocity and their capacity all that stuff when you go in and you make a change you're kind of disrupting that right so you're you're forcing them to reevaluate what they already agreed upon and that one change that you made in one user story could affect something else. It could be blocking something else. It could be dependent on something else. And so that whole chain reaction happens. The other thing too is it just introduces a lot of scope creep. And I've done a video on um, how to identify scope creep early. So go watch that video right here. And that will help you to minimize or to recognize that this is about to become scope creep and you kind of rein that in early so you don't end up with a situation where you're in your sprint and you just have changes coming and coming and coming and the scope just getting bigger and bigger and bigger you don't want to do that okay don't want to do that to their team it doesn't look good on you as the product owner or the business analyst or the product management team or the project team it doesn't look good and it doesn't help people to work together well because they can't anticipate what you're coming up with right and you keep making changes when they already agreed upon what they're going to do so it's not a good practice to have. The other reason why it's not good is, like I was saying, it affects the sprint. And especially the changes coming at the end of the sprint where developers are trying to finish in time to make the deadline and then you introduce a change, now they have to scramble. You know how that goes, right? So yes, you can make the change to the acceptance criteria uh, while you're in the sprint, but it's not a good practice and you should really minimize minimize this happening okay i mean you're having a sprint stand up every day so you could use that to ask any questions before or leading up to the, the start of the next sprint and also if you keep making changes believe me you're going to hear about it in the retrospective you're going to hear them say hey <laughs> this business analyst this product owner they they're very hard to 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 to, to predict because they keep coming up with changes while we're trying to develop what we agreed upon. So you're gonna hear about it. So let's not do that, okay? Now, we live in the real world and things happen. And you have to be able to adjust and to, to, 
to work with changes because that's what agile is about it's about being able to adapt to change so i'm going to share with you how i handle uh, a change to the requirements but before that i wanted you to listen to a word from our sponsors guys i want to introduce you to this pillow that i have been using for almost a month now this pillow actually has water in it <laughs> so it has this wonderful little nozzle here you open it up it comes with this funnel you pour the water into the level that you're comfortable with and the pillow does not leak so you're not worried that the water is going to drain out it's not going to drain out with your seat and um it's actually very very comfortable it's very soft the water is on this side and the rest of it is just like regular pillow but it's very soft and very cozy and very uh, comforting and I've been searching for pillows for a while because I have neck and upper back issues and until I found this pillow I have not gotten a good night's rest so I've tried every type of pillow I bought memory foam pillow I bought hotel style pillow everything but until I got this pillow because what the water does it keeps it cool during the night and it also supports your body in a very flexible way that really helps you to not wake up with like weird muscle pains in your neck and stuff so i would encourage you to go get this pillow i'm going to put the link in the description below and when you buy it from that link you'll be supporting me and what i'm doing here on youtube so go get this pillow get a good night's rest because you deserve it okay welcome back so if you have to make a change right i mean we don't live in a static world where this is it it's written in stone and never can change but if you have to make a change first thing you need to do is you probably need to discuss that a little bit in your stand-up it, it doesn't have to be a long discussion you could say you know hey there is something that came up that's going to affect the story you're working on i'm going to have a meeting with you guys just to make sure that we're still good to do this within the sprint you like know, just kind of prep them that something is coming right that helps to set the expectation and it gives just a little lean in into what you're coming up with so that they can kind of know it's coming, right? So that's one thing I, I normally do. And then I also evaluate the type of change it is. So let's say it's something very, very small, or I think it's very small, and I think it shouldn't be a big um, change. I evaluate that to see if I need to add it to an existing story or if it needs to just be its own story that we might need to prioritize for another sprint. So I'll give an example. Uh, let's say you're building a, um, a system that needs to export, it needs to export some data to uh, PowerPoint, Excel, um, and maybe PDF, right? And then you've written the story, you know the contents, you know the layout, you've done all the stuff, you've written your acceptance criteria. And then as you're developing it, you realize that you know, when you export it, the potential for there to be a lot of data and the data could fall off the slide if you're exporting to PowerPoint. Sometimes PowerPoint, when you export tables, the tables are so full of data that it ends up going off the slide and you have to scroll down. That's not very a very good look for exporting, right? Especially if it's been done by the system. So one acceptance criteria that you may not have put in there could have been to limit the number of data to show on each slide so you only show five that way it breaks at five and puts it at the rest on a different slide as opposed to scrolling off the slide that could be something that you just missed because it's not that you didn't do your requirements you know you need to export this this thing to powerpoint but these are little nuances that can creep up that you wouldn't think about until you're actually in it so then if that happened i would probably say to the developer hey you know we need to put a limit on how much data is exported per slide? Is that something that we can do within this ticket, you think? Or do we need a new ticket? Or how do you, how would we handle that change? And he can come back and give me feedback because guess what? He may know where he is in the development stage. Maybe he hasn't touched the ticket yet. Maybe, you know, this is before he's been assigned to work on it, so it's okay. Or it could be at the tail end of it where he's about to close the ticket and I jump in with this new thing. So I would rather ask the developer what the best approach is for this change rather than just throw it in there and he has to figure it out later on, right? So communication is key when you have changes like these. Um, and so he may say, yeah, you can just add it to the ticket. So if, he, if he's agreed to add it to the ticket as opposed to creating a new ticket, what I would do is I would go in and I would actually write the word change 
before I write the acceptance criteria for the change. And I would say the date it was changed. And I would put that in a different color. Because if you're using Jira, you can change the text color. If you're using something else, it's even, even easier because Word or um, Excel, that's, that's, no, that's no problem. So in Jira, I would change the color of the text to maybe orange or something bright to kind of pull his attention that, hey, we've just added something after our planning session and this thing is new, right? And I would put that in, put the acceptance criteria beside the word change on the date. And then I would at mention him, even though we talked already, I at mentioned him that, hey, this has been added to the ticket. Uh, let me know if you have any concerns, blah, blah, blah. That way, it also helps me to know that, hey, in this ticket, we had these changes when I'm looking back and doing the demo or, you know, reviewing what we've done. And so we have some kind of a record of that. This is what happened. I like to do it that way because I feel like it's it's a good way to handle change without, like, just throwing it over the fence, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Don't throw things over the fence, people. Just talk to your colleagues, get agreement. Everybody's aligned, and it works out much better that way. The other thing to note when you're making a change to your acceptance criteria during the sprint, if you have to, is you don't want to spring on them a whole different feature set and call that a change. That's not a change. That's like a, a complete new thing. So if I looked at my, my example with the export and I said, oh, we forgot to export to Google Docs. Now the customer comes back and says, we, we use Google Docs a lot and we need to export to Google Docs or something like that. I couldn't call the developer and say, hey, we're exporting to PowerPoint and PDF. Let's just export to Google Docs as well. Let's add that in the ticket. No, <laughs> that that would be, to me, that would be a bigger change. I don't know. I, I don't know if technically that's small or not. I don't know. But it seems like it would be a bigger change. It's a whole different connection. It's a whole different thing, right? So I wouldn't just squeeze that into the, to the sprint. That would be a whole different ticket that would be prioritized and we need to have discussions around it. And that would be something that I would... Personally, I would create as a separate ticket and have that discussion later. I wouldn't be trying to squeeze it in. Now, if you're meeting a deadline, let's say you have a release date or you have a client who needs to get this for a certain reason, maybe their renewal or maybe some contract, whatever. If that's the case, then I would create a separate ticket and then make it urgent and say this has to be something or, you know, that we have to do is urgent. I would talk to the product owner. I would get a meeting with the development team and say, hey, we know we've already we're already in the sprint, but this thing came up. The clients need it for their renewal date. We want to make this, make them happy. Uh, I've already written the, the ticket. Here's the acceptance criteria. Let's have a discussion with your development team to see what the grooming, you know, the estimation points on that stuff is going to be. And can we get it in, right? Even though the sprint is already on the way. So again, it's all about communication. It's all about how you approach things. It's all about not throwing things over the fence. It's all about not getting into scope creep and just adapting to change in a very structured, ordered way. So yes, you can make changes during the sprint. You just shouldn't make it a habit. And if you have to make it, you have to have a process for making that change. Most companies have their change management process. If you're working with like a, a PMO office who, you know, have all of these things already ironed out. If you're working in a SaaS company that kind of a startup where we're all just doing our own thing, then you have to come up with that process. I mean, everybody's doing their own thing. Every company is different. Every situation is different. But I would encourage you to... Do as much to avoid making changes during the sprint clearly. And if you do have to make changes, to make it as transparent as possible. And um, when, you, when you realize that you have to make a change, one thing to caution you against is not to rush to make the change because you know you're already in the sprint and you're like, oh, we're already one week in the sprint. I have to rush to do it so they can get it in before the end of the sprint. Because sometimes what that will do, it causes you to also miss even more acceptance criteria. And you end up with more changes later on because you're rushing. So still do the same um, life cycle, still have the conversation with the clients or the customers or the staff, still vet it, still make sure it's of value to the customer because all of the user stories need to have value to the customer. So don't just rush, oh yeah, we need to get this in real fast. Make sure it still aligns with what you're trying to do and that the, the customer has value and that this is something that um, makes sense to make the change for. All right. So anyway, that was my talk on can you make changes to the acceptance criteria during the sprint and how to handle changes during a sprint. I hope this was useful, guys. I mean, if it was useful, please subscribe. 
and you know watch the next video and leave a comment and check out the sponsors and support me some kind of way do something right <laughs> Look, I'm having a ball here. I love business analysis. I love talking about acceptance criteria and agile and all these other topics. Check out my other video. If you haven't yet looked at my channel, go check it out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.